I think I should say Suprabhatam to all of you. Now, going by yesterday's discussions that we had, a number of uh, panel discussions and presentations, and early morning Ahuja Sir's presentations that we saw, I must make a point at the very start that for me it seems that writing is much easier than perhaps coming and moderating a session like this when we have experts like Dr. Konsasau, Clara, and Gopinathanji, and Mr. Ayya for joining in. But though it may be a small crisis type or maybe a problem, but I would like to believe Alexander Pope, who in his famous poem, the Ulyssa had promptly said, I would like to follow knowledge like the sinking star. And so it is for me too. Now, the discussion today is on how kitchens are creating value for modern builders who are supplying modern homes. If we have any doubts about kitchen design, rest assured that in today's scenario, it is the heart of the home. As I talk during writing articles to a number of kitchen professionals, one point that they make is very true. That, see, kitchen is the heart of the home. And I think none of us here present would have even an iota of doubt over it. I was just going through a survey conducted by professional builders who say that out of 10, 8 out of 10 builders that they surveyed feel that kitchen is the most vital point when it comes to marketing and selling their homes. And I think the entire idea of why this panel discussion on that is the essence of that survey. So I would like to know from the eminent panelists that we have. On the left, we have Dr. Konsau, we have Clara, we have Gopinathanji, Mr. Yappa is joining in. How do you think, Dr. Sam, as an architect, as an interior designer, how is a modern kitchen creating value for builders, for customers, and for the entire fraternity of the kitchen? Modular Modular kitchens are here to stay. There's no question and doubt about it. They are definitely a value add to any kind of residential construction, be it a bunch of mass housing, villas, luxury bungalows. There is a demand and the reason is that not only is the kitchen the heart of the home, it's also the fact that women go out to work today there is a section of the population that feel that kitchen design should be A, modular, B, extremely functional, C, very aesthetic. Aesthetics is a demand of the day to day from the customer. And the last factor is that, remember, modular housing is linked to mass housing. Modular kitchens is nothing but an offshoot of modular construction. It makes it that much easier for the builder to dovetail a kitchen into a home uh, in terms of mass housing. And therefore, I feel kitchen, modular kitchens are definitely a value addition. It's just become a natural thing, a trend that is simply going to keep continuing. And remember, this is an offshoot of Western construction. In the mid-1960s, 1950s also in New York, at least that's where I trained, Modular kitchens was accepted. I mean, it's almost like it should come like we have faucets and, um, you know, sanitary ware and a toilet in apartments. Modular kitchens was an accepted and a definite expectations. expectation. Therefore, I think in the current reality scenario, absolutely yes, it is a value addition. No question and doubt about it. I think your point is well taken. And going by yes, uh, Avinash's presentation yesterday when we saw that, the mixed segment housing or the rather the affordable housing also coming into the mid segment seg sector i think uh, the very concept that you said that you know affordable housing and modular kitchen go in hand so i would like to know from you clara that you work with a number of builders and also retail customers how is the scenario in canada yes i uh, totally agree kitchens are the heart of the home and uh, in addition the valuable uh, uh, list we've received just now. I also would like to mention um, the lifestyle has changed, not just in uh, uh, Canada, 
Uh, but here, I am just by talking uh, to you, um, I understand, and as you also mentioned, women have going to take on jobs and they are not home. Um, however, when the family is home, they want to be together. And the uh, kitchen is the heart of the home because while perhaps the mom is cooking, the children can be around and do the homework. Um, socializing is also a big change in our lifestyle. We want to show off our kitchen. We are proud of our kitchens. We don't want to hide the kitchen anymore. We want to show off the wonderful um, new design, the wonderful um, um, latest um, uh, brand products and uh, uh, technology that's available. And uh, we, if we consider it, kitchen is also pretty much the most expensive room of the home. By the time we consider all the uh, products that go into the kitchen, um, if we really add up the cost of um, uh, appliances, the quality content of the cabinetry, the flooring, and so on, um, I'm sure we would agree it could be very easily the most expensive, if not the most expensive home of the, um, sorry, most ex expensive uh, room of the home. So it's a big investment. And um, um, I certainly think that contributes to um, the builders also uh, putting more attention to it as to what they um, offer to their um, um, potential clients. Uh, <clears throat> well, the point which I take from you is that kitchen is a big investment as far as uh, be it a builder or be it a retailer customer. Now, I'd like to know from you, <coughs> Mr. Gopinathan, that since that you supply a number of kitchens to builders, you are working with Renko developers that you told me, how do you convince your builders that kitchen would be adding a lot of value to the project that they're having and it would be a competitive uh, differentiating tool for them to sell the projects? Happy morning, everybody. First, I've been an architect, working with builders, trying to tell them why they should go for modular. Modular is different from modern kitchen. I mean, we assume every client wants a modern kitchen. Is it modern kitchen or a modular kitchen? For builders, there is no other option other than modular kitchen. You know, whether it is classic or modern, that's the style. But the point is modular kitchen. What is that? Why should they have a modular kitchen? The bathroom and the kitchen are two rooms in the house which needs to be finished before you move in. You can buy your bedroom, your dining table, all that later, right? But these two rooms require a lot of services. Electrical, plumbing, tiling, I mean, you name, name it. The last thing is the supply of the modular kitchen and installation. But to me, 90% of the work gets done before the supply. And if you want to do mass and quality, better stick to some standards. Like what he said, yeah, you want to customize? Yes. I mean, what is done in a factory is perfect. It's not an MM difference. You want to be different, go to a carpenter. But that does not mean you get quality product. Right? If you want quality, and if you want it long-lasting, you better have it done in a factory. How do we add value to the builders by add, adding a modular kitchen? A modular kitchen can come in different formats. I mean, all of us know flat pack or completely built or, you know, I mean, whatever standards you want. In the developed nations, 35% to 40% of the total cost of a project goes into bathrooms and kitchens. In India, I'm very, very sad to say that it's not more than 5% they look at a bathroom or kitchen. Let's be realistic. What are we talking about? Luxury, premium? Is this lifestyle or this product? Today we are all moving towards lifestyle. You know, the Western world is influencing us. Right? 
If this lifestyle was so bad there, why are we taking it in here? We have the oldest culture here. But let's be more realistic. Let's move on, people. You know, it's a fast world. We will not be able to deliver this kind of production what the builders are doing unless we move into modular system. I asked the builders, you are doing luxury and premium. Every person who can buy or afford a luxury or premium wants it customized. Have you given them the option? No. You want to stick to standards? Yes, stick to standards with an option. Before they sign on the dotted line, tell them these are the options. You go to America, Canada or Europe, before you buy, sign on the dotted line, you know exactly what you're getting. Which model, which color, everything. But here we are afraid. We are having dash, dash, dash or slash, slash, slash. What is this slash, slash, slash for? Because you are not confident of the supplier. And if you want to be a brand, stick to brands. I request all the builders, look at it in a different. By adding this 3 or 5 percent on to the, your total value of the project, how much more are you increasing the value to the customer. He doesn't have time to go around, find a supplier, do the electrical, do the plumbing coordination. No. It's actually going to be a pain for you if you let them do that. You know, if you can work with a good supplier, this is my supplier. He will give you from A to Z. Work with him. Or A to B or whatever it is. Give them choices. You know, choice is very important today. And India is a value for money uh, clients. You know, brand comes in later. So I think we should all look at how can we add value to the builders. You know, we need to look at that rather than, you know, value in the sense also reducing their time, energy. You know, can we as a supplier assist them in forming or customizing along with their end customers. Now all of us who are looking into supplying mass, we should also look at trying to do some customization for that project. Individuality is a must. And everybody who wants to own a home, it's a dream home for them. So the kitchen is a dream, another dream. This is my experience in trying to promote more you know, with the builders adding another 25 rupees or 100 rupees per square feet, is the client willing to pay 200 for that one? Can you add us on? Thank you. So two points that I get from what you delivered, Bhavan, and I believe you have a concurrence with Dr. Pansusau who said that modular kitchens are here to stay. And you made a very important point that providing a modern or modular kitchen, now it may be a classical, it may be modern, it may be contemporary, that's different, but so far as it is modular, it's going to add a happiness quotient. It's going to increase the happiness quotient of the customers. I'd like to know from Mr. Ayappa, who represents so far developers and national brand as far as real estate company is concerned, how do you feel that, and going by Mr. Gopinathan's perspective, how are modular kitchens adding value to the projects that you do, and how do you convince your end customers that providing, that since you are providing a modern kitchen, a modular kitchen, it is going to increase the lifestyle, it is going to make it more easier, it is going to make them more beautiful. Yeah, good morning to all. Um, uh, I actually, uh, Shoba developers, you know, I am sure that uh, most of you all would be aware of the brand. Uh, I represent the backward integrated division of Shoba, which is the interior division. Uh, typically, uh, let me put, you know, summarizing what inputs I could get. Uh, see, what we actually, in practical terms, what we do is, we would always want to give our customers a delightful kitchen and a wardrobe. Typically, we call it as a fixed furniture solutions to homes. Uh, the customer normally, when they take over the property, they would like to move into their houses with kitchens and wardrobes. Basically, it makes the house livable. So, uh, we try to represent ourselves with our principal developers, telling that, okay, why can't we propose a solution along with uh, at the time when they book the homes. Uh, but the deliberation has been going on, but eventually we found that since it's a more personalized kind of a requirement for a house, it has to be segregated from the development or the handover 
so that you know we approach the customers directly. Currently, what we are doing is actually we um, almost do about 30% of our shoba homes. We pr furnish them with kitchen and wardrobes. Uh, that's a challenge by itself. So uh, the thing is, in case the developers, you know, the, you know, I might be a little bit, you know, more practical in this. In case the develop uh, the developers try to provide the fixed furniture solutions along with their homes, uh, that could be a big challenge in actually delivering the homes itself, because that is the primary business for any developer. Okay, as a value addition, fine, we give it is fine. But the options, the choices, the kind of customizations, what the customer expects, the family involvement in the entire process could actually speaking may not give a scale to a manufacturer. So what uh, I would like to represent is actually developers, and since we are also in the same field, let us have a separate division to that. Let us have a separate cell within the builders itself so that they can target this customers, wanting customers separately. I am sure that we can get a scale. 50 to 60 percent scale we can get from the customers who have signed up with the builder. Normally a customer signs up with the builder because they trust them. Okay, they believe that they are going to deliver the products as per the you know, prescribed quality standards, prescribed timeline, yes, fine. But the thing is, yes, in, in case there is a separate cell formed within the, uh, you know, uh, within the builder community itself, within the, uh, within, within the different uh, departments, I feel there is a feel-good factor for the customers that, okay, yes, anything I want, I can approach a specific cell there who can deliver the items to us. Yeah, and this modular system, actually, what one challenge what we found is, normally, conventionally, they provide a cooktop as part of the kitchen unit. Typically, integrating a modular system into a area, into a niche area, we are finding it quite a big challenge because it's not in plumb. There are a lot of deviations in the civil things. So one thing what, you know, as a community, what we should actually take a decision is don't provide a cooktop. Give, keep it separately. So that, you know, a modular a furniture manufacturer like us could actually integrate the available uh, cooktop onto the modular system what we place it there. Uh, we can get a scale in that. Typically, today, what we do is, uh, we, as you know, Mr. Gopinath uh, was saying, we give options to the customers. I feel this model, you know, uh, it's quite a workable model with us. We give them give different uh, color choices. We give them different accessories, what is there. We have standardized module, what is done. But we say we customize to your home. Every unit, what is done in a factory, is customized to a specific home. I feel uh, we started it off about four years back. I think so. We've been growing it considerably. Uh, considerably, you know, in, in, in at least about thirty percent, we are growing every year in this business. I feel it's a very, very uh, meaningful business also, and it's a great validation to the customers and to the builders also. So I feel uh, you know that's that, that there is what is the you know way forward, and as a, an additional business point to the builder and to the manufacturers also. Your points are well taken, sir. Now, since we have got all four perspectives, I'd like to know from you, Mr. Ifa, once again, what is the design brief that you give to an interior designer? See, we have an in-house design studio. Uh, how we, how the, the process is this. We have typical layouts of all the units. Any project across uh, India, we have typical units, uh, layouts. We develop design specific to that units. We give them about three, four options. So that is a triggering point to the customers to start thinking, yeah, this is what is going to come into my house. At least there is a platform for them to think over that, okay, yeah, I can customize it here, I don't want this, I can knock. See, the, the entire conversion process is very, very minimalistic. One meeting, two meetings, the customer is able to decide on his interiors. So the, the interaction time with the customer is very, very limited for, for us. Uh, Dr. Konsi you have been working with a number of developers. Now, do you feel that when a building comes up, when an apartment comes up, is the kitchen design already in mind before the layout is done, before the entire structure is done? Or is it that once the structure is made, you have the floor ready and then you are involved? I'd like to think of it this way. Uh, based on my experience with uh, major builders, what we as architects do is that we think inside out. And that is very critical. It depends on the smartness of the builder, the smartness of the architect, to first figure out the interior functions and then move it on to the form, dovetail your service ducts, engineering and utility lines in a smart way. Because that way you have a win-win situation. Uh, typically when I deal with a developer, being trained in interiors as well, I'm also an architect, Oscar and I uh, figure out the interior solution first, dovetail it into the form, 
you know, it, it's a sort of a parallel process. And what we typically do is we have a model home done up with the builder, with the modular kitchen supplier. I also agree with the fact that never give pre-made RC tops uh, for the customer. It's a smart thing to make a tie-up with a modular kitchen manufacturer. Give them a couple of sample home options in terms of finishes, in terms of configurations, etc. And it's also very critical to, for modular kitchen manufacturers also to standardize the sizes of, say, uh, you know, a studio apartment, a 2 BHK apartment, a 3 BHK apartment, and constantly also update these trends into the minds of architects. Because then that becomes a very supporting mechanism that we can bring into the minds of developers. Uh, and therefore, I feel the process is a lot more easier. And I think since this trend of modular kitchens is relatively new in India, we're all still in a state of flux, and I think we should learn from our uh, Western counterparts, and we are going in the right way, trust me. Uh, these things, you know, by virtue of time, trial and error, irons is itself out very nicely. So I would think that there should be a neat dovetail between kitchen manufacturers, architects, builders, and standard, standardization is extremely critical. I will take one more point from the previous uh, speaker's um, uh, you know, input that customers' delight is very, very dependent on post-occupancy evaluations. I have oftentimes worked with uh, modular kitchen manufacturers. They merrily install a uh, you know, modular kitchen and then walk away. Nobody does a post-occupancy evaluation. Unless you do a POE, you will never know what actually worked, what actually failed. And therefore, you can fine-tune your design. That, in my mind, is extremely critical and that probably the next time around you correct your mistakes and that probably, you know, in, is a good input to customer delight. So this POE factor is very critical and that's something I feel builders, architects and even kitchen manufacturers must take cognizance of. Uh, yesterday we had a lively discussion where on the primary question was when the products are same, and customers are, you know, bargaining for price. How do we as a kitchen manufacturer or a designer differentiate yourselves? Clara, I would like to know from you, since you work in the area of green and sustainability, how do you convince your project builders that if you provide a green kitchen, that would be their most competitive advantage? For example, just to again uh, continue on uh, uh, the line uh, uh, we've already received, uh, um, in uh, Toronto, for example, the builder also considers the uh, position of the building. Sometimes, you know, the location, the site selection is just given. And for that reason, um, um, as much as the builder perhaps would love to order 200 exactly the same, because the sizes are pretty much the same, um, uh, kitchen cabinets, um, because, and that would be the most economical. Uh, we won't be able to do that because we will have to deal with um, um, east-west, um, um, south-facing windows, for example. And this is where the sustainability comes in, for example. Um, if um, we have a direct sun heating in, in one department, you know, um, uh, for a longer uh, period of time, then I will consider, for example, where I'm going to locate the fridge. So the fridge doesn't have to um, work extra hard and for that reason use more energy. And rather, you know, I'm going to design a different layout. Now, uh, back to your question. <laughs> Sorry, could you repeat? <laughs> what was I would the like to know second question? Uh, from you. How do you convince your builders mm -hmm. that providing a green kitchen or mm -hmm. a sustainable kitchen mm -hmm. would add to their competitiveness? Mm -hmm. um, everything comes down to proper communication and um, um, a message that um, is properly delivered to a client as to value. When the customer understands um, they will receive uh, products that are healthy for the environment um, and therefore it will be healthy for their uh, um, living um, environment as well, for their health, um, then naturally that is exactly what the client is going to uh, prefer. Um, 
again back to appliances. Um, the, for example, the upfront cost of one appliance, perhaps most of the time, the more efficient appliance might have, have a higher um, uh, price point. Having said that, if you look at the um, usage cost once it's installed, right, the operating cost, perhaps that will make up, most of the time it will make up in a year or two. So again, everything comes down to communication and uh, this could also explain uh, price points and uh, this is also part of value. Not, it, value is not just in the um, money and uh, definitely quality is value and uh, good quality is uh, naturally therefore sustainable. Um, but we have to look at the hidden uh, aspect of it as well and once we understand that um, um, properly um, communicating it to the builder and with that the builder can also differentiate himself from other builders by offering uh, such uh, green considerations and uh, it's certainly uh, very popular and uh, um, demanded in Toronto for example. Uh, so communication is the key. Uh, so Gopinathanji what are the challenges that you face when you communicate this idea of providing a modular kitchen to the builders? First and foremost, I think that's not my department. I will leave it to you. You know, I will leave, I'll finish my flat and leave it to you. If you can convince him, go ahead. But I don't want to put it in. That's where I really come in and say, give me a minute, right? You are here for a day or you want to be here for a longer time? Even in building, I'm sure Shobha will agree that referral is their most important sales stuff. So how do we address this referral? The first time when he's with you, if you have not satisfied him, he is not going to come back for sure. You can forget it. Whatever freebies you throw is not going to work there. So let's start with the basis, whether you're looking at referral or just selling this project and running away. If you are here to stay, let's look at what is your potential cli clients and what are they looking for. Most of the houses today, if you see, is there a real requirement for the end user to move in? Or is it an investment? Let's differentiate that first. If it's an investor, don't even bother selling a modular kitchen. Right? If it is a person who's going to live in there, he is 100% your client. Especially in a place like Bangalore and Chennai and Mumbai and all, where the working class doesn't have a bit of time. They're already overworked. They're working more than 14 hours a day. They've come to you trusting you can deliver. So put in a little effort and say, yes, apart from this, I can also deliver this. This is an option. But please give that option. Don't shut yourself out. So that option, I'm sure you're also understaffed. India, we have huge population. But staffing, I am sure everybody will raise their hand. Is there a staffing problem? Yes. Probably both the hands. You know, I also want us to address this issue. Who is going to take care of the staffing? Are we running any trade schools? We should start. You know, we have to do the dirty work. I don't think it's dirty work. That's the best work we can do if we can all join together. Because as if Sleek can supply products just for training and somebody else can supply product for training for plywoods and all, it's a, a joint effort by the industry. And if this set of team can be offered to them, they'll be more than happy. A designer staying in their office, they're willing to give a computer. They're willing to pay for the guy. But how to find this guy? Right? As an architect. Right? Do they have the time to find out with a lady, left-handed, right-handed? You know, how high are you? 
what's your preferences no i don't have the time let's be realistic to understand the client's requirement is the name of the game today if you want to win please understand the client's requirement and as a request i think the builder the supplier and the architect or the fraternity in design needs to get together and we need to form trade schools and get them trained and across india same kind of knowledge be it bofi kitchen who is selling or the local guy we need to have standardization and let's have standards irrespective of american or european or chinese let's have standards and stick to them it takes time but let's start somewhere that's my request i think the builders will benefit out of this the problem today is mostly skilled stuff and kitchen definitely requires lot more than the installer like he said my walls are not 90 degrees you know india you should manufacture 67 degree uh, stuff or 92 degree stuff not possible that can only be possible if you do it at the site and how many kitchens can i deliver not possible so let's even start there do we have a supervisor going in early and measuring whether the wall is straight and telling him please i want the wall straight today asking for a 90 degree wall is like criminal offense what are you asking you wouldn't pay for that so i mean it's very very difficult like she says after sales i think as a manufacturer we need pre sales you know site if the builders will let us come and help them do this they'll be more than happy you know we walk in there and say hey this is wrong i want it here i want it there they say get out i'm already not having people to do this job now you want me to do something else thank you bye this is where the connect is not happening we need to start early with the designers like she said let's work with the designers now if it's an economy project like the economy guys go in premium premium guys go in what is premium what is luxury what is economy in terms of cost in india it's always based on real estate it's not the product you deliver your square feet is definitely not based on the quality of the construction right it should be it should be if you are working with brands it is definitely for sure it need not be international brands it can be indian brand why not indian brands i'm sure we can work with builders if they give us a chance and work with the design community at an early stage but request again is let's all get together form trade schools it's high time so yesterday there was a lot of discussion on you know post sale services i think today we have got yet on the discussion point which we should take back is pre sale services so you first ask your customer what he wants and after you deliver the products ask him as vasani sir was saying whether it is functioning in the proper manner or not uh, so far it has been a monologue from my end i would like it to be a dialogue so i leave the floor for questions we have eminent panel here you can put across your questions and i am sure they'll be more than happy to answer you hello good morning everybody uh, i have been studying this uh, modular kitchen industry from last 12 years and i have gone to some european countries also and i have studied there even in italy and other countries they have modular kitchen manufacturers on their panel they are involved from the blueprint stage and here i see everybody saying oh builders doing this with all due respect to builders and architects but why this involvement is not there at the blueprint stage because if the involvement is from the blueprint stage all these kind of hassles about 90% of the hassles can be taken care on the paper itself this is one thing and another thing what i i'm listening from last from yesterday oh we are we have shortage of people we have shortage of professionals 
I, I just want to ask how much dignity of service and how much dignity of labor we give them. We come here, we have, uh, I'm very grateful to Mr. Vasani. He's the grand, grand daddy of our model kitchen industry. Because of his initiative, we came with the design awards for the new generation. They were given awards, they were appreciated. But with all due respect, again, I will ask the builders association, builders lobby, and the architects also, when they go to the modular kitchen industry person, or a person goes to them, and he says, sir, this is my designing charges, 2,000 rupees, 3,000 rupees, or 10,000 rupees. How much is paid? Builders say, oh, you are asking for designing charges. And architects say, yeah, kamal hai. Don't designing charges maang rahe ya ram se. Then sometimes, because I am considered to be a very raw person in our industry because I like to say spade a spade. And what the experience we get from the exhibitions, I, I don't have met them on a very personal level. But what you, the vibes you get, they are very down to earth people, they are very professional, and they can take good care of the things. So if the trend is set, after a, some time, maybe the kitchen manufacturers from the lower strata will also benefit because then small people will engage them on the blueprint stage. And if we get some dignity to the designers of the modular kitchen industry, people will aspire to go to that uh, profession. Like in India, ask any boy and he will say, oh, I will like to become a cricketer. Why not everybody says I like to become a hockey player? Because there is no money in it. So we have to give them the incentive for what we want them to become. We are not giving them incentive. So how can we say that uh, they will become uh, a good professional interior designer or a good professional modular kitchen designer? We have to give them incentive. Now we have to, and the incentive has to be both in uh, monetary terms and as well as uh, moral terms. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your suggestions. Uh, I believe there's a gentleman there, Mr. Izaz, I believe has a question. Good morning to everybody. Um, I think so all the panelists agreed that uh, the kitchen is the heart of the house. My question is to the architects as well as the builder out over there. If it is the heart of the house, why is it only restricted to 70 to 80 square feet? See, designing something within that 70 to 80 square feet is a big challenge and giving them whatever it is a basic necessity again yeah kitchen could be a lifestyle need it could be a really functional kitchen it could be something which is you know uh, typically in case you know and uh, coming back to practical reality now uh, the area of a kitchen is considerably lesser in any home it cannot occupy 75 percent of the you know the area there but the thing is what we can actually provide them to make the kitchen usable, functional, considering the lifestyle needs, their you know, basic needs, that is actually a part of design. I feel uh, a, a small kitchen can be very functional, very elegant, which can actually blend into the other areas of the home. Now, uh, you know, I feel uh, most of the kitchens are open kitchens. It's not, it's not you know, closed kitchens. So I feel uh, the design element there makes a uh, 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 plays a large role there and uh, I don't think so kitchen uh, being a small area there would make a difference actually to a home. It actually perceives to be a part of the home. It is an extension of a, you know, space there. Uh, just to further reiterate my question, you, I fully agree that uh, it has to be functional and uh, 
much more to the need. But if you see whether it's a basic apartment or a real luxury apartment, the size really does not increase. The reason for the size is obviously if we are talking of a changing trend and making the kitchen a part of the house as a structure, okay, and opening up the kitchen, if we do not have the space, I really do not know how do you keep on increasing that. Otherwise, we will be sticking to a very basic elements and the elements of customization will be only left to colors and uh, some amount of hardware, not really adding more stuff to the entire kitchen. That's what was my point was. Can I answer that question? Sure. It's a design question. Um, I think the open plan kitchen is a great option or I would say a great solution to this because space is a problem. There's no question and doubt about it. No longer can we build huge dining rooms, huge kitchens, etc., etc. There's something called FSI. So it's important that at least in my projects what we uh, emphasize on is to create open kitchens uh, where the dining kind of blends into the kitchen area. Also, I suggest that for Indian condition where there's a lot, the cooking is very, very different. There's a lot of frying, there's a lot of, you know, um, uh, procedural differences from Western kitchens. And also the fact that we have maids and uh, the hired help that comes in, that you, we actually bring in slidable walls. So any time you want a little privacy, you slide the wall back and close up the kitchen. Most of the time, it is an open kitchen. So there are options. It depends on how creative the builder, the architect is. And also remember that technological advances have also created good inputs for kitchen design. Uh, and that can be meaningfully explored and used into creating good kitchens. And it, that's definitely a value add. Just to continue as a, one more as an architect. Is kitchen just the kitchen? Or is it dining, pantry, utility, store and kitchen? Tell me, is just kitchen, kitchen or these five rooms make kitchen? Right? So let's look at it just not as a kitchen. There are certain things we take it to the pantry, certain things to the utility, certain to the store. Right? And it is becoming the most expensive place in the real estate and as far as I always tell when a builder comes to me and says my client wants larger kitchen what do you mean by large kitchen is it storage space I can do a nice storeroom for 30 or 40 square feet and it'll cost me less than a lakh but if I were to deliver a storage space modeler is it essential First is the question essential. Like she says, design elements can play a lot of role. And today, kitchens are open because the husband and wife, the five, ten minutes when she's cooking or he's cooking or they're taking care of the kids, they want to meet each other eye to eye. So the kitchen is opening into the family room and the family room opening into the formal living room, dining room. So the dining is coming into the kitchen, right? Can we have a breakfast table? So addressing these are definitely design requirements, you know, at an early stage. So it's all about lifestyle. So these five rooms or things have to be considered. In India, we have a wet process of cooking. We don't buy packed foods, reheat them and just, you know, thaw them or saute them and that's it. No. And trust me, in India, we are not getting laborers to clean kitchens and bathrooms. We better design kitchens where we can handle them. You pay a few euros or a few dollars, yes, we get superb janitorial services abroad, but not here. No way. So that is also something design element comes into effect. Can I, can I just add that? Um, yes, regarding the open kitchens, I, I totally agree. The family can be together, but it also we can increase visually the space uh, by removing walls or not to having new constructions dividing walls. 
uh, actually it's going to feel much, much larger without increasing the uh, footprint of the um, home or um, um, uh, an apartment. Now, um, I also would like to uh, refer to how in Canada at least uh, it, um, uh, the builders are working. In a high rise, there are at least three different sizes available, three, three for, uh, different units. And uh, people buy the size of units based on how big the family is. So uh, naturally, if they are buying a bigger square footage um, uh, apartment, then the kitchen size is going to be um, similarly uh, bigger because they are thinking of a bigger family needs to sit around the island and uh, um, there will be bigger um, size appliances needed and so on. But uh, um, uh, the saying goes that the heart has a reason that reason does not know. But as far as the heart of the home is concerned, I believe our speakers have given a number of reasons as to why they are comparatively small in size. And for ma any other questions, I'm sure our speakers are there. We can discuss with them over a cup of tea. Uh, over to you, Ramit. Uh, 